Well, my name is Kimberly King. I'm from Fairport, Ohio. I went into the Army when I was 18 years old after graduating from high school. Actually, before I took my Shahada, I started wearing the scarf. I was working at a church, and the father came in and he said, Kimberly, what did you do to your hair this weekend? And I, I laughed. I said, I didn't do anything. And he said, okay, okay. He said, you know, if it's cold in here, you can turn up the heat. And I said, oh, I'm fine, thank you. The veil is liberating in so many ways. The veil causes you not to have to follow male-driven requirements. It's an act of worship. Members of the community asked me, oh, are you going through chemotherapy? That Monday I came in from the weekend, I found on the typewriter um, a, a letter of termination. And I didn't have any hard feelings because for me this journey was about growing closer to God. For the next four months or so, I applied for so many jobs, all of which I was more than qualified and none called me back. And I started to run out of money in my savings account. I didn't have friends down here. I didn't have family anywhere. I was really down here in Baltimore all by myself. One hotel called me for a night auditor position and they, I came in for the interview and it went very well. He told me, Kim, we love you. The staff love you. You would be a wonderful asset to, to our company, but you can't wear the scarf. But I thought, oh, let me go look one more time before I do something like this. My eyes went directly to the advertisement that said, Islamic Society of Baltimore secretary needed modest dress required. They hired me. Well, I met Imam Bashar when I started working at the mosque. Uh, after about two years of taking classes with him as a teacher and as an imam, and subhanAllah, after a lot of prayer, I actually approached Imam Bashar and asked him if he would consider me as a potential wife. And he didn't laugh at me. <laughs> he, uh, he was quiet for a moment and then, um, and then he said, well, he said, let me pray on it. And I thought, okay. From the moment uh, I married her, I just felt that uh, she is, a, she is a wonderful person and, of course, now she is the mother of my four children. And his family also made me feel like, like a queen when I'm in Syria. She represents the side of America, uh, which uh, people in the Middle East do not know. Since I started the uh, foundation, the Civilizations Exchange, I thought a lot of the misperception about America in the Arab and the Muslim world uh, requires for people to travel and to interact face to face. We work with, uh, with cultural exchange students, students, college students who would like to travel to different countries. She is uh, an important uh, factor of its success. She called me, and uh, that was actually the first Muslim I knew in America, and she's been such a positive example. My husband, uh, he, he moved here from Algeria last June, and I'd have to say it was one of the hardest times in both of our lives. I was alone, and I was depressed, and even my wife was really doing a lot of good things to me. We're just so new to each other, but um, we sought counsel for our relationship, for Islam, for many reasons. She showed me uh, a lot of things about how an American Muslim woman can be and, and what she can give. It was very reassuring to hear her say, and here she was, you know, married to a person who studied Islam, you know, hearing about their day-to-day -day struggles, and it's just such a human, normal issues that every couple has. There's always encouragement by this family, and uh, they always overwhelm us with their love and their help. And we still today come, and now we have a, a daughter, her name is Hania, and uh, life is so beautiful now, it's so good. My whole intention was to be a good witness of God from the time I was working in the church, to be a good witness to people of God's mercy, love, forgiveness, kindness, to share them with other people and to make their lives better in whatever way I can.